MMA rants and raves, UFC 114, Todd Duffy versus Mike Russell. Guys, this fight by far had the most shocking ending that I have ever seen in any mixed martial arts fight that I have ever watched. It probably has the most shocking ending of any mixed martial arts fight in history. I was absolutely shocked based on how the fight started and then how it ended. Now, this is a review of the fight, so if you haven't watched it, this will be a spoiler, of course. So stop this video right now, get this fight, watch it, and then come back here and leave a comment. And please tell me I was right, <laughs> because this was just unbelievable. This was sick. So let's get started and let's talk about the fight. First round, you see these two guys standing up with each other. It's very clear from what you're seeing that obviously Duffy is the striker, a very skilled boxer, great technique, throws great uppercuts, he has punches coming from all corners, he's using different stances, throwing good lefts, good rights, very good hands, they're quick, he throws with power, we know that from the Tim Haig fight, so you just see that Russell can't land anything, I mean he's trying to land a punch here and there, nothing, I mean Duffy's just so quick. And then, of course, he tries to even go for takedowns, and Duffy is just so fast. And it's unbelievable, because this guy is 6'3", 255 pounds. He moves around like a lightweight. And if you look at the guy's legs, my goodness. I mean, as a kid, I used to collect He-Man action figures. That's what this guy's legs look like. I mean, trying to get this guy down is possibly like trying to remove a tree from its roots. I mean, he's got such powerful, powerful legs. The guy's shoulders are huge. I mean, this guy is built solid like a house. And that's the new breed of heavyweights in the heavyweight division today. And the reason is, why are they getting guys like this? This guy is an NFL draft pick. I mean, NFL players make big bucks. Why would he come to MMA? Because now MMA has grown and these fighters are getting paid more money than they used to get paid. You know, long gone you know, the days were getting paid a few hundred bucks. To fight, now you got guys like this getting paid a lot more money. So they're looking at mixed martial arts as an avenue to display their talents and to pursue a career. So anyways, basically for the rest of the round, you see Russell trying to chase this guy, can't catch him, even when he does get something on him. Duffy is just so solid, you can't even drag a guy like this down. He's just so strong, such solid legs. Very good takedown defense, good technique, and it's just amazing about Russell. Russell got tagged. I mean, he just, it was just open season on Russell. He got hit with many big punches, and at the beginning of the fight, it was just like 424. He really landed a wicked left, and then Russell's legs went out from under him. I said, that's it. It's going to be over. He's going to finish it, but Russell got back up. He gained his composure and continued to fight with him, and then... Duffy just continued the assault, all kinds of punches, uppercuts, rights and lefts, landing a lot of them. Russell had nothing to answer him. Russell went for takedowns, not even close, couldn't catch him, couldn't get him down. And that's how the first round ended. Moving on to the second round, you basically see a more aggressive Russell. He's trying to take it more to Duffy. He sees, you know, since Duffy has hit him, he knows how dangerous Duffy is based on what he did to Tim Haig, which was the fastest knockout in history, and, and hasn't knocked him out. He said, look, I've got to be more aggressive. I can't get this guy down. I've got to do something. Comes out more aggressive. And finally gets, in 224, he gets a leg hook. But what good is that? How are you going to get this guy down? I mean, lifting one of those legs is like, you know, like, like a tree. And it did nothing. He just shrugged it off. Duffy just shrugs it off, and then he just continues standing up. He's just forcing Russell in to a stand-up war, which is the whole plan, and it's working perfectly because he's just outclassing him standing up. And basically that's how the second round ends. For the second round, it seemed like Duffy, although he still was sharp and he was still strong, he did lose some of his cardio. He was slowing down a bit. So before the third round starts, this is interesting. Mike Whitehead is in Duffy's corner and he's telling him, look, all you gotta do is touch this guy. Just touch him. That's all you gotta do. And he was telling him that if you do that, you'll just knock him out. Touch him. He's trying to reassure him. Duffy looked tired. It looked like he was losing some of his cardio. After the round, he had his arms bent over the cage. And a lot of fighters do that, but it just looked like he was taking heavy breaths. And, you know, like I said, anybody can get tired after all that. 
it's just a lot of action. So what happens is the third round starts and you just see the same thing. You see Duffy, all kinds of combinations, landing some, and then of course you see Russo trying to counter. Let me just tell you, Russo, great shin. I mean, he took a lot of punishment, but he was just losing this fight. He was getting outclassed. And then, about 228 left in the third, it was the most shocking thing that I've ever seen in an MMA fight. Talking about a guy, a super athlete, NFL draft pick type of guy, 24 years old, 6'3", 255 pounds of pure bone and muscle. Guy has incredible footwork, speed, great hands, even a few sprawls when he sensed that Russell was going for takedown. So he's great instincts. I mean, everything going for him. Russell was gone. He was finished. And then with 228, Russell somehow gets inside and lands a right kind of combination. It was one right, then another one. It seemed like a right. You see Duffy just going out. Lights out. Where the heck did that come from? I was absolutely shocked. I almost fell off my chair. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. Here you have a guy being totally outclassed the entire fight. All right? For nearly three rounds, you have a guy that's being taken to school, standing up, couldn't land anything. I, I barely saw Duffy even get touched by Russo. He landed a couple of, couple of shots, but didn't get all of it. Wasn't able to get anything. His counter-striking wasn't working. His aggressiveness really didn't get him anywhere. Duffy was too quick, too strong. The takedowns weren't even close, which is what he was depending on in order to win this fight. And, and now, he just knocks him out. I don't know where it came from. Here's a guy who was taking a brutal beating an entire fight. Great shin. It was shocking to see, especially after what happened to Haig. And that's the real shocking thing about this thing, because Haig himself has a decent chin. I mean, you just saw it in the Beltrain fight. Beltrain was really hammering away at Haig for most of the fight until Haig started countering. That was a close fight. But, uh, you know, Haig can take some punishment, but... You know, he was knocked out in seconds. It was the quickest knockout in MMA history by Duffy. And here you got Russo, who was just was, was taking everything, everything that Duffy was throwing him, all right? Everything. Being outclassed, standing up, couldn't get any takedowns. And then this is like Lee at Gettysburg. It's like this desperate endeavor. You're putting everything into this punch. Try to do something, which no one expected. I mean, it's funny the way the announcer said, go for broke, go for a takedown, because that's what he's known for. He's not known to knock people out, especially like, not a guy like this. And he goes for a right, just completely flattens him. It wasn't like just a knockout. The way he fell, he just fell flat on his back, out cold. As decisive as a knockout can be. No T in front of KO. KO. Pure K. And even Russell was shocked. He was like, you know, when he knocked him down, I remember he nearly tripped on him because he was so flat on his back in front of him, he nearly fell on top of him, and then when he fell, he just tapped him, like a, he tapped him a little bit on the head to see if he's knocked out. So what had just happened? He was shocked. Look at his eyes, he couldn't believe it. Uh, he was probably, he's the guy that knocked him out, and he was probably just as shocked as everybody else. This was the most shocking ending I've ever seen. Like I said, most shocking because you have one guy totally outschooling the other guy, and then out of nowhere, from a guy who, out, he's known to be a wrestler, and a grappler, and jiu-jitsu guy, coming in with a brutal knockout to knock out a, a super conditioned athlete like this. It was just incredible to see. And uh, I've never seen anything like it. And ladies and gentlemen, last but definitely not least, here's to Mike Russo. Mike Russo, you are an inspiration to all mixed martial arts fighters. If there is ever a mixed martial arts fighter that is down in a fight, being outclassed, outschooled, by the better, the faster, the younger, well-conditioned athlete. You could say to yourself, from this fight on, remember Mike Russo. And that will give you the confidence to continue in the fight and always give you a chance to never quit. Mike Russo, you are the man. I'd like to know what you thought about this fight, the incredible knockout, the shocking ending, Please leave your comments, rate this video, and subscribe, and thank you for tuning in.